Welcome to Heart to Heart Hardies. We're super excited to be joined today by some special guests. I'm Jeanette Stevens and I'm from Michigan and I have a couple admin friends with me today. I'm Dawn Bateman from Texas. Hi Hardies. I'm Marg Stark and I'm from San Diego, California. And today our special guest is the newly elected mayor of Hope Valley. We are so thrilled to have him. Welcome, Ben Rosenbaum. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Yes, my newly perfected wave. That's an impressive wave. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, Mayor Hickam. Exactly. The, the, the town's people are all there. <laughs> So when you had um, your, when they announced you as the mayor, you were nowhere to be found in Hope Valley. So we wanted to give you the chance today, if you want to give your mayoral acceptance speech for the Hardys, what do you got for us? <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, now that I'm not out corralling cows and helping out the neighbors, I can finally address my public. <laughs> and to do so right in front of what is clearly the mayor's office is, uh, is a true honor. So first, of course, I'd like to thank the many people who voted for me because math and the, uh, the democratic system dictate that I got more than just Fiona's vote. So thank you to the, to the many people who voted for Hickam for mayor. And um, I'd also like to go over my, uh, my campaign platform because I didn't have much opportunity to speak to the people about it. And uh, given Hope Valley's history with fires, uh, the teacherage, the church, the oil wow. derricks, we've had a number of big fires in town. And uh, I think it's time that we address it properly with some fire safety. And especially given the fact that Elizabeth is likely to go out on more dates, perhaps even a proposal at some point, the number of candles that are gonna be lit in this town. It's high time we had appropriate equipment and an appropriate approach to fire safety. It's not a matter of if, but when. <laughs> oh, where's the- I mean, uh, Jeff, take a moment. Fire extinguisher. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Oh uh, my God. Yes, island wave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed that the people of Hope Valley did not get to hear that. That's just, just. Um, well, they'll hear it now on this web, whatever they, the newfangled. They, <laughs> we'll get this, shipped, we'll get this recording shipped back to 1919. And, uh, Perfect. Yes, yeah. time travel. Yeah. If you wouldn't yeah. mind, it could help with some of my critics. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll be sure to uh, CC uh, Bill Avery for you there. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe um, Mr. Coulter as well. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, Lee <laughs> is having some issues with sour. Honestly, yeah. he's taking you to task. It's just horrible. Yeah, Terrible. Well, that was awesome. I don't even know how we follow that, to be honest. But... <laughs> no, we're done. <laughs> so we're done, done for we're the day. Yeah. Okay. We'll close the, close the, <laughs> close the recording. recording. We're done. No, no, that's great. But um so we're definitely going to dive in a bit about this season on uh, When Calls the Heart, but you are here because you have a special cause near and dear to your heart, and we want to make sure that Hardys don't miss it. And so uh, we're going to have you, if you could share right now, tell us a yes. little bit about what's coming up for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep it brief, but then, so we can get back to When Calls the Heart. But um, as many Hardys have seen on my Twitter uh, and from supporting in years past, uh, I participate in Walk MS uh, Los Angeles, which is an effort to raise money to support the National MS Society and the good work that they do to both research a cure, um, which hopefully we're just getting closer and closer to for this uh, debilitating, often debilitating autoimmune disease, and also very important work they do to support people who are currently living with MS, uh, multiple sclerosis. And so any amount helps. I know this year I'm doing like a, a special incentive. Um, and honestly, I wish I'd made the dollar amount a little lower because I'm worried I'm discouraging people from donating at lower levels um, by asking them to donate uh, $100 or more to get this video message from the mayor 
of Hope Valley. Um, but regardless, any amount helps. And uh, thank you guys for your donations. And I hope we can get a lot more support going because it's a really important cause. Yeah. How many years? I have, have, a, I have a friend that has MS, and uh, so I understand that. Yeah. How many years have you done the walk now, Ben? It's been we've seen you um, talk about. Yeah, it uh, I started it. I believe it was 2016. I was invited to join a, a team, the same team I walk with, a group of friends, one of whom has MS. And she has since gone on to work for the National MS Society. So she's, she's really involved with them and doing good work with them. So it's grown from something that I didn't know uh, a ton about in terms of how wide reaching it is and uh, how much support is needed to something that I, I care quite a bit about. It's become pretty near and dear to my heart. So it's uh, something I look forward to every year as an opportunity to get out and, and do some good. Well, we're so privileged to be able to participate, Ben, and it's just cool that you are involved in this. And, you know, Hardys are very good at showing up for these kinds of things. They really are. They, I, I reached out to the Hardys last year for, I think it was the first time that I'd kind of opened things up to um, looking for support from the Hardys, and they doubled the amount of money that I was able to raise. Wow, this so good. Of those. Um, really exciting to realize what that what an incredible network we have of support um, in the Hardys. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, season six, I think it was when Elizabeth was pregnant. Um, we at the Hardys family re reunion in Vancouver held a baby shower and these people coming from all over the world brought books and baby items and then we were able to donate it to a local shelter which of course was completely overwhelmed That's so it's awesome. just it's just amazing not only you know the friendships that we enjoy and the community that we enjoy but to be able to do things like this um is really gratifying of course it's exactly what hope valley is all about so yeah absolutely exactly what the mayor should be involved in <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> so um going to a hardy's question um erica legrand robertson from treasure island florida wants to know how you feel about how your character is being portrayed this season because she thinks that you're a very wise businessman and she wonders if hope valley is taking you seriously wow that's uh that's a great question uh it feels like uh almost it's a, like a hard hitting question right out of the gate it is sorry about that yeah <laughs> i um you turn on a dime here <laughs> well um it's you know the challenge of an actor's job is that we show up and we we tell the stories that are given to us so sometimes we have a little bit of say here and there we can propose ideas um but ultimately, it's the writers and the showrunner who are deciding what stories are going to be told and how they're going to be told. And so um, sometimes on the first read through a script, I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, and so that just comes from, you know, something that I was told a long time ago by an older actor that I was doing a, a play with was that we, the actors, are the advocates for our characters. Uh, whether it's putting on a Shakespeare play or something that's being created brand new, like a TV show. Um, and I've always taken that to heart because I feel like we have to see them as real full people that need our advocacy in order to be the best version of that character that, that they can be. And that doesn't mean that they always have to do the right thing or be good people. They can be really interesting if they have more gray areas and maybe sometimes they everybody is flawed and does the wrong thing but anyways that's a long-winded way of saying i don't necessarily always agree with the choices that are made for hickam but by the time it comes to actually playing it um i've come around to it generally speaking because um i i appreciate the challenges and Oftentimes, Hickam is in a position where he is supporting other storylines as well. So when I take a step back and view it from that perspective, um, I'm able to go, oh, I can see why this is helpful to the story as a whole, not just my own. 
And to be part of a collective like that is really exciting. On this show in particular, we have such a large cast mm -hmm. um, and serving all those stories is, I mean, they've, they've got their work cut out for them in the writer's room. Yes, they, cert they certainly do. I was listening to the interview with, um, with Viv and, and Natasha this morning, and it's just, it's really interesting to hear the actor's process about, you know, when you get the script and you see what is cut out for you and the idea of that advocacy for your character, you, you know, and John has said that multiple times that you all have spent all of this time and know these characters best, but she was using the example of you know, would Minnie really invite this guy over for dinner? You know, mm -hmm. would the mayor really, you know, hang up that doohickey side and, <laughs> you know, struggle with the door? You know, would this, <laughs> would this occur? And, um, and it, her conclusion was, you know, calling her mom and saying, talk to me about this. What, what do you think? And is there somebody that you consult with to, to work through Hickam's choices? You know, actually, Martin Cummins was a great resource for me because, uh, you know, his character has been handed twists and turns yes. throughout, throughout the series um, yeah. and has really had the most back and forth and up and down in terms of his character's moral compass. Right. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah. He's got to he's got to show up and whatever he's being told to play, he's got to play it 100 percent. Right. Um, and so in moments where I wanted to, you know, I have this personal connection to Hickam where I know what he's capable of. And I, you know, I had a conversation with John heading into season eight where he told me he was really excited to see this sort of Barney Fife character grow into a bit of an Andy Griffith. Mm. And so there were moments uh, in season nine and I saw that arc coming true in season eight. By the end of it, I was running the oil business and right, right. riding off into the sunset with Fiona. And, and so in season nine, uh, what I was reading about, you know, uh, kind of being the butt of the joke at times in terms of the mayor's race and, mm -hmm. you know, Gowan comes back into town and, literally breaks into my office yeah <laughs> and instead of standing up for myself yeah. and saying anything I'm like hiding from Gowan um and so I was concerned that that I was being kind of sent back down the Barney Fife path and uh sort of curious about where that was going and I was reassured that there is a a, a path for Hickam, um, I don't want to give anything away, but in the next uh, couple episodes, um, you can. Really... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you go oh, right ahead. Got it's you okay. almost got me there. In the next couple episodes, uh, there is some really fun stuff for Hickam, and we get to see him take on more of that role of mayor. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really interesting, and particularly, I mean, we all have. Um, different sides to our character that we slip back into from time to time, you know, totally. vulnerabilities totally. that surface. So, you know, I think that's possible. Uh, so how did you end up exploring it in your own mind? Well, um, having had conversations like the ones I had with Martin Cummins, I, I just saw it as a, it's a much more interesting thing to play as an actor. If there's change and challenges that you have to kind of justify. And um, ultimately, as much as I'm excited for Hickam to grow and become this new version of himself, I really love playing him nervous and fumbling. And so there's a lot of comedy to be mined there. And there were times where I felt like uh, from episode to episode, I was kind of having to figure out where Hickam was in that journey. You know, at one moment I'm saying to Bill, hey, I got this job, don't worry about it, I'm smart enough. And then the next one, I'm trying to shove my stuff into an office that's too small to house me because I, I wanna give him, I wanna let him keep his office. And so that sort of um, struggle for balance was going on yes. throughout the whole season. Yes. And yes. at the end of the day, regardless of what I think, I show up on set and, when you just take it one scene at a time, it really, it's, it gets a lot simpler to yes. focus on that and just yes. play whatever I have in front of me with total commitment. 
Yes. And Hickam can be both that guy. One of my favorite moments is when you're trying to get your drink order in at the saloon <laughs> and like no one's paying attention to you. Yeah. I, I, I'm fangirling here. I literally have watched it a hundred times because it <laughs> kills me every single time. But then you're also the guy who you know, 45 degree angle, you know, moves the beer around and gets your right. dang ear right. so without the head on it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the composite, which is a beautiful thing. Martha Hermsman, I hope I'm saying Herm, Hermsen from Colorado. So she's been waiting patiently for this very chat because Aww. she's obsessed with your character <laughs> and she wants to know how you came to be on the show and wonders when oh no sorry and and wonders whether you auditioned for different parts other than this one um well hello martha um thanks for waiting so patiently uh i i auditioned for hickam in season one and i hadn't auditioned for any other roles and at that point um it was unclear what what the role was going to be really so i got to do a little bit in season one, where I was in the um, Yost's Mercantile behind the behind the counter, and ostensibly I was there to get a letter for Elizabeth, but it was at the moment when Rosemary first walks in, and my job really in that moment was to kind of make Elizabeth notice how men react to Rosemary's presence, and so I got to just play, oh, who is this angel walking by? <laughs> So when I was asked to come back in season two, um, I know the, the through line for me was here I am with Rosemary again. And she, this is the beginning of when she started asking me to do things for her. Like in this case, it was building the set out in the woods. Right. And the whole kind of game of it for me was here's this guy who's willing to risk his job from his perspective to uh, help Rosemary out. So he, he must really uh, care for her. And so I, I played it that way with sort of my own, in my own mind, carrying a secret, holding a secret torch for Rosemary and um, in, a, in a sweet way. And at that time, who was, it? I think it was Robin, uh, was our showrunner at the time. And yeah. she saw the way that I played that uh, sort of nervously and eager to please and uh, just loved that. And so season three was when she started, she wrote me into almost every episode that season. And that was really in my mind when Hickam was kind of fully, fully formed as the character that he's become of this guy in town who's just desperate to help everybody and always there. Um, and uh, a bit of a utility player, kind of like when it, whatever the writers need a guy in town, uh, mm -hmm. Hickam would show up. Well, Brian oh. Bird said that Hickam was his creation. Yes, uh, yeah. 100%. Season one, Hickam was named uh, by Brian Bird, and uh, he, he bequeathed to me, I think, the best name on the show. Absolutely. Well, then when... What season did you get Mike? I don't remember. Is that oh, yeah. <laughs> got a first name? I like. What I think it was that? like season four or five. Like, it was, it was yeah. late. <laughs> like, I honestly I never it. knew whether Hickam was a first or a last name in the first. I was sort of like okay. Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or like hair. I just I was this one name uh, entity in town, and uh, yeah. Then I got Mike, and I think it was that same year that Cabin uh, saw Mike in the script and was like, "I'm not calling you Mike. I'm calling you Michael." Michael, yeah. And, oh, really? Uh, and that was really the yeah. That was uh, nobody liked that at all. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, Hickam has been kind of funny because even in the opening, like in the season one credits, I want to say they misspelled the name. I think it was, I forget if it was Hickman or if it was. So was it Hickman? Because so many people confuse it on the interweb. So I think I may get this wrong. It was either Hickham or Hickman, oh. but it was wrong. And I remember seeing that 
uh, in the credits that season, I wrote to the producers. I was like, hey, just so you know, I don't know if you guys have made a change, but that's not my, that's not the name. Um, and is as late as like a couple of seasons ago on my trumpet case, the, the props guy had put uh, Hickman or Hickham or something like that. So like people continue to get it wrong. Uh, and it's become a total delight for me because people will write the sweetest messages on Twitter. They'll say something totally supportive about Hickman. And I just go, that counts. I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you. Well, to their credit, we got to blame autocorrect for a lot of that. Oh, yeah. It, that it'll is get me darling. I love that you've turned it into a term of endearment. It's very sweet. <laughs> Really I just cool. love the first time someone called you, Mike. It was like a collective. You could hear the hearties going, yeah, Ooh. like confusion. Yeah. I'm like, that's not right. That's not Who right at all. <laughs> no, they still resist it, I think. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Well, I've seen somebody use the hashtag, or maybe they just put it in parentheses, like, uh, never Mike, like Hickam never Mike, or something like that. <laughs> right? That's good. That's, that's good. funny. That's the hashtag. Oh there you goodness. go. <laughs> funny so i one of your scenes i really love and i don't remember what se season it was but when you had to i don't know if you were asking someone to go out and rosemary was pushing you down and on the on your knee i don't remember what that was but no that was um that was a different character oh to ask, the, <laughs> this to is... ask on the date is that what you're talking about yeah this is, this is great. Uh, this, it, it was a different actor playing a, a different character, but um, my understanding of it, at least as it went down, this was, I think, season four. So a little behind the scenes. Um, the, I was told by our onset writer at the time, hey, in the next couple episodes, uh, you've got a romantic storyline coming up. It's going to be you and um, uh, Katie, Yost. Katie Yost. And Rosemary's going to push you into asking her out. And I was like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah, looking forward to doing that. So and I manifest then, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for that block of filming, they actually didn't use me. And there was another guy who came in. And I remember seeing it later. And I was like, that's just... Hickam, they haven't changed, like it's the same lines, it's the same attitude. He's like Lee's right-hand man, who's just kind of like follows Rosemary around like a puppy dog and needs help. And um, and I guess, you know, it it the 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 powers that be over at Hallmark have have kind of changed over the years now. So I don't know, uh, and it doesn't do any good to speculate about who had an issue watching me in that storyline but I think they I think they literally just last minute were like uh no not Ben so swap in this other guy and then, oh funny yeah oh, so my word. I don't blame you whatsoever so there's a reason <laughs> yeah I was gonna, by it should have been you yeah. I need to do my Hardy's card I I yeah, really it. It. we're <laughs> taking it on I'm so, like I know I, I, I just think best. you realize the vision was right there. Exactly, exactly. You exactly. know, I, I absorbed it and I manifested. <laughs> exactly right. That is wild. Well, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I was like, but your com comedic um, timing is always on point. So mm -hmm. good. Um, Marianne Klein of Missouri says that while your role has taken a more serious to turn in this season, she's loving her, your comedic um, moments and she wonders what what was your favorite bit of comedy to play with Hickam oh well first of all that's uh that's nice of nice of you to say about my comedic timing I um I find that yeah I, one of the joys of playing Hickam is that I get these comedic moments and um there are a lot of very funny people on our show but not all of them get the kind of opportunities that that Hickam as a character gets to um, showcase that or call upon that. And one of the things I really enjoy, I think because 
Hickam can be a bit of a wild card in that way where I, he can play more seriously or kind of uh, struggle with a doorknob for a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I get a little more a little more leeway to improvise a bit on set. Um, it doesn't happen a ton on our show. Um, generally, generally speaking, we stick to what what is written. But there was a great moment that didn't even make it to air um, when they needed uh, essentially that what they needed was for Nathan to be over by Fiona and me at the bar when we were drinking our sarsaparillas and, and fretting over the mustache bandits work on my, on my poster. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one too. <laughs> and so to get him over there, even though that wasn't scripted because they wanted him in the right place to turn around and see May coming down the stairs. Um, and so I forget how many takes of it we did, but they basically were like, you guys just kind of make something up. Nathan, make up a reason to be over there. And um, Ben and Kayla, you know, talk to Nathan until we need him to turn. And so uh, I got to very earnestly play, and I think a lot of the best comedy is people earnestly, really earnestly trying to get something they need. Um, I was trying to get him to take this case seriously of this, uh, this mustache bandit and whoever it was. Uh, and I was asking him to please investigate because uh, I'm no joke. I'm, I wanna be mayor and people won't take me seriously if you don't investigate this. And he, <laughs> Kevin is such a funny, such a funny guy and such a great improviser. And he sort of played, he just like looked and turned and saw May and just kind of like put a finger up to me and walked, <laughs> walked off towards her. And I was like, okay, wow, that's a fast response. I didn't expect him to get on the case so quickly. That was, all right, I think some justice is gonna be done. That was perfect. That was perfect. So wait, so May is the culprit behind the mustache? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no, what was going on for him was uh, <laughs> that he was just captivated and wandering away, entirely yes. not engaging with me at all. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> but it was, um, it was, yeah, that was those those moments of just playing with each other are really the best. And and the doorknob mm -hmm. moment was another one where they basically just said, do your thing. You know what? You know this isn't well, just that come line up there and do what you want to do. That was Seriously? classic. When yeah, you yeah. said you're embarrassing me to the door was not written. You you made that up. Yeah, yeah. All that. Uh, <laughs> that was so funny. Written. That's great. So they rigged this incredible mechanism. Uh, Neil Fernley was directing, and he had gotten this great setup with the door. It was his idea to have it kind of like just swing open uh, on its own. So they had this whole thing with the door where it was, they had it mechanically rigged so that the door could open on its own when it needed to and so that it would stay locked when they didn't want it to open and so that they could pull the nail back and the sign would fall. It was a whole thing, um, which is really fun. We don't get a lot of sets like that on our show. So to play around with something like that, it was almost like being uh, back on stage in theater where you have this kind of timing, uh, timing work to do. And uh, so Neil just said, let's see, let's see what you want to do. And they said action. And I went to town trying to get the door open. And I turned around, took the break. And then I went back at the door. And um, <laughs> they got me saying all different kinds of things. We did a bunch of takes of it. But the, the worst part is that I busted through the door a couple of times too. Oh no. <laughs> it felt really bad. They had to stop production and like repair the door and like glue the door back together. Well, you're like I was really going for it. I was trying, I was trying so hard not to. You don't to know your own it. strength. But yeah, I, a couple of those times, it was also, it was a wet day. So that, that boardwalk is really slippery. Oh yeah. And I would like take off back to the door. I couldn't really stop myself. So I just like put a shoulder into it and went right through. Oh, it felt so bad. No, I didn't. That hard work they'd done. Were you injured? No, no, I was fine. Oh, okay. I was fine. Yes, the door was injured. <laughs> yeah, you should see the other guy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, you know, Nathan's had been a lot of issues because, you know, the mustache and the the canned peaches, you know. Exactly. Yeah. A lot, a lot of that stuff. These right? are exactly the kind of cases that I would expect a small town Mountie to be all over, <laughs> but he just seems to have no interest. <laughs> <laughs>
can't imagine why. That's is there something more important going on? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. It's so funny. So we talk about um, your your character and uh, so what a you know we had a, an opportunity to see the picture about your family and things like that. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah. we have a question about that, Mary Jane Stock. That oh dear, I don't know how. <laughs> Oh, I'm guessing up. Stohansky. I'm yeah. guessing. Sorry, sorry, Mary Jane. Um, from South Texas. I wonders if you have a backstory in your mind about how Mike ended up in Hope Valley. Oh well, <clears throat> great question. Uh, and hi, hi, Mary Stohansky. Oh, sorry. That's a good one. Yeah, sorry. I think you um, it. Uh, thank you for the question. I, I have, um, and I, I've had one since the beginning, and it has changed and evolved with each season as I gain more information from the writers about who Hickam is, because, of course, I can have any ideas I want in my head, sure. and if they're not on camera, that's not true. It's not the book who he actually is, so... You know, he's being created and recreated all the time. Uh, so something like this moment, it, it particularly um, in season nine with this moment where I get to show the family, I, I learned a lot more about Hickam in that moment because um, that was not the backstory I had in my head. Oh, really? No, but I, I, I love it. I think it makes a lot of sense, uh, particularly because Hickam is a guy who... I think really does value, you know, regardless of the time and how we portray it uh, on When Calls the Heart, I think there's been a little, we've acknowledged a little bit that like men would sometimes struggle to see women in a man's role or something, you know, they, with the way that they treated Fiona becoming the barber, for example or when there was extra hands needed at the oil derricks fire and, and um, there was some pushback on the idea of a woman helping out. And I think uh, Hickam has always been uh, somebody who views the sexes as equal and uh, in the way that he supports Fiona and uh, particularly, I loved the moment when he encouraged, Hickam encouraged Fiona to run for mayor. Um, because, and not just because the last mayor was a woman, but I think, you know, I think he has a lot of respect for women in charge. And, and so this backstory that he comes from a house full of women and was raised, raised right by those women makes a lot of sense to me. So that was, that's, that's one of those moments that's just a gift. I, now I have that as part of my official backstory for Hickam. Um, and I also had imagined him as somebody who grew up in Hope Valley but um, now it becomes clear that I've got this family elsewhere. So he obviously came to town at some point um, on his own. So I'm, I'm constantly learning, which is exciting. And, and it, what it requires is that I kind of let go of some of the things that I've been keeping in the back of my mind as my backstory for years now. So now it just it changes and evolves. Wow, that is so interesting though. So for me, I heard the idea that Hickam had all these sisters and I tweeted that I think um, we have so much potential for guest stars. Look at all the, <laughs> all, the, all the guest stars we can bring. So apparently the rest of our team mentioned that to Mr. John Tinker this week and he just like ran with it, I guess. <laughs> so, so you might have some sisters coming to Hope Valley if, that we, would be a, awesome. if we get a season 10. Yeah. So, so at least love to hear. So we all have already thought of, you know, a million names that we would love to write. It's a lot of guest stars. I know, right? So Ben, we would love to hear some ideas from you. Any, uh, any, any seven uh, women you want? Was it seven sisters? I think it was seven, wasn't it? I don't oh, know. That's boy. a lot of guest star potential. So <laughs> yeah, all of the M names. They really, I mean, if if they write that script, they're not doing themselves any favors because when you're in a script writing uh, program. Maybe this is a little too inside baseball, but uh, the names as part of something that helps as you're writing auto-populate. So as you start typing the first couple letters of a name, 
it'll pop in there and say, you know, so, so as you write H, it'll populate, populate Hickam. But if they, with all those M names, they're going to have to sort through all, by, all these different names. Now John's going to be rethinking it because he, he's not going to want to deal with that nightmare. No, as he's writing final draft nightmare, exactly. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah, final draft. Yes. That's so, writing um, software. Yes, exactly. Um, I, uh, uh, well, I, honestly, all my favorite, uh, all my favorite Canadian actors are on our show already. Um, Aww, good answer. Oh, good answer. Love love it. It. It's true, uh, but I would be very excited to see anybody show up and play play a sibling, just because I, you know, that would be such a fun to see a totally new dynamic for Hickam. It would be really, it would be a blast. It really yeah, would. And to wow. see the town, town react to all of this. Yeah, song. exactly. Yeah. That would be <laughs> like be rosy. Really oh my goodness. Oh, oh it'd be so funny if they all arrived like the ladies of Beaubertin from Harry Potter. In a row in the same outfit. Uh, we were kind of going in the direction of the wedding veil four, five, and six, but Harry Potter, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it really writes itself. Let's be honest. Just I, was gonna say, I don't you know, think it could go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong? And I'm sure super affordable for to bring in, you exactly. know, seven yeah, deaf female homework. You can fill it out a bit. Blow the budget. Blow it. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh well, um, Donna Cohen, who's a Hardy from Connecticut, you probably recognize that name. She's been around since one of our OG Hardies. Yeah. Hi, Donna. <laughs> she said she's thrilled to see Hickam's role expand this season hmm. and she's wondering what the challenges are for you as an actor playing him now that he's much more multi-dimensional you touched on this a little bit but yeah yeah I feel like it, that that was sort of um some of the fabric of my answer to an earlier question um but it really is just about showing up every day and just the challenge is to stay in the moment and play what I've got to play that day and not worry too much about the, you know, I think multidimensional is a great way of putting it because, you know, human beings are flawed and will do things that are nonsensical to other things they've said and done in the past. And I think that's something that you know, what John, one of the things that John introduced as during his time as showrunner uh, over the past two seasons has been challenging our ideas of who these characters are. And that's true across the board. You know, last season, um, watching Jesse and Clara go through some marital strife and, and butt heads a bit. I mean, that's, that's a side, of, it's, it challenges our idea of what stories are being told in Hope Valley and how these characters are going to be. Um, and that's really exciting. Um, and similarly, what, what we mentioned earlier about Lee struggling with, uh, struggling with some, whether it's jealousy or worry about the town that he cares so much about, or whether it's uh, searching for his own sense of purpose in the town, um, he isn't handling it in the way that, you know, Lee has always been that guy who is sort of a paragon of behaving the way one should behave mm -hmm. and handling things, uh, things roll off his back. So now um, I know that that was a challenge when Kevin was getting those scripts to, to see this character that he's come to love and know in a certain way, behaving in a way that didn't feel the same as it has been before, but we all, uh, everyone get, got served up some of those challenges as part of this. And it, I, I think it's great to shake things up, especially in a season nine, you know, it's, it's time to explore other sides of these characters. And so uh, the, the challenge was to embrace those moments as opportunities rather than get too hung up on, no, but Hiccup wouldn't do that. Right, <laughs> right. Well, I got, I love the idea of the, the Hickam and um, Bill and Lee in dynamics. So it, when you get and you interview for a job and you don't get it and you think that you're really the one that it should be, have been selected. And so I see the behaviors that we see with Bill and with Lee that, you know, a disgruntled person is just like, you know, I should have had that. 
and then Bill is another one that is mentoring in some way. So, you know, it's a reality. It's a reality, oh, you know, a real world scenario. And I, I'm so, um, that's the reason why I love the show. I mean, the things that we see are translatable. Yeah. Even today. So I love that, that whole um, storyline. I think that's true. And I think that's, uh, that's been even more true during John's tenure is that we're getting more of that, those kind of real world parallels um, reflected in the characters of Hope Valley. Whereas in the past and without it being, excuse me, good or bad, um, I think Hope Valley has been a, a, a bit more removed and mm. a little less touched by those more common everyday uh, negative feelings or jealousies or, you know, everybody was always just there to support. But, um, but in the past two seasons, we've seen that these characters are much more human and that's, that's exciting. And I think it is validating to people watching to recognize that like these characters struggle too. And this is, now you get to watch how they deal with it and how they figure their way out of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and presumably with such a long running series, then it also just is an investment in your actors that gives them an opportunity to you know, to show multi-dimensional sides and to explore, um, you know, all of their gifts. So yeah. I think it's exciting. So well, you have I... certainly, you've certainly been with so many different scene partners and it's so fun to see you interact with so many different folks. Um, is there somebody that you love working with? Is there somebody you would like to work with? And to be perfectly honest with you, we got bombarded with romantic you know, questions. So if you want to drop any bobshells about, you know, a scene partner that might have a particular interest yeah. for We're you, all ears. you well, certainly I, I, I could. Feel like I, uh, I feel like I dropped a pretty big bombshell earlier when I told you I was played, Hickam was briefly played by another actor in order to facilitate <laughs> a romance with Katie Oates. <laughs> Maybe you just like to go back and do that scene. That's the scene yeah. partner you yeah. like. Dropping <laughs> in. Insert. Um, you know, I've been really lucky, as you say, to have worked with. I've, I've had. It seems like each season, I've been kind of paired up with uh, one person. Most of all, um, early on, that was Pascal and Cabin, which was a dream come true. They're both such pros and fun people to work with and so warm and inviting on set and playful in their characters and so confident and so it was great for me just to be in scenes with them and uh, I felt like they really raised my game just being with them and of course they're just super fun people to work with and then um, at some point I transitioned over to more with Martin Cummins and that was once again I mean that guy is so incredible and so experienced. Um, the number of sets and hours of television that guy has done is really mind boggling. And um, so it was like a masterclass getting to work with him. And I got to see a new, a new way that people work. And again, I'll say this over and over about everybody is so warm and inviting and comfortable to be with and funny and fun. So the time working with with them is great in doing the scene work because they're all great actors but the time hanging out when the cameras aren't rolling is uh, maybe even better um and then more recently I feel like I've gotten to work a lot with Kayla um and a little bit here and there with Andrea and uh I loved working with both uh Aaron and Eva as well um when I would have scenes with Jesse and Clara. So like, I've been with a lot of different people and the differences in their approaches to the acting is always a joy to kind of bounce off of and work with. Um, and, but then it's the time in between setups and stuff when we're hanging out, that's really like, yeah, I'm just hanging out with my friends, friends, yeah. it's great. And now of course, most recently, I've been paired up quite like this season. I was with Jack Wagner a lot mm. and talk about a guy who's experienced and, and can really put on a clinic. Um, he was instrumental to crafting these scenes that we had together as well. So it, it's just like, 
I couldn't ask for a better group of people to work with. Yeah. And I'm happy. It's I've literally been, I'm always sad when I see that I'm kind of being written in another direction to work with other people. Cause I like who I'm with. Yeah. And then we'll find that the next person is like, just, just as, as good. wonderful. Right. Yeah, just as yeah. wonderful to be with. Oh, is there anybody yet that you'd like to get written into? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I haven't worked a ton with well, I, I haven't worked a ton with either of Kevin or Chris all that much, um, so I, that would be really fun um, uh, to work with them. As long as we've been, and since uh, considering that I was, I feel like the last real scene I was in with uh, Elizabeth was way back in season one. So I would love to be. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I Aaron, didn't you realize that. That's an incredible actor, and is such a. I mean, she's amazing on set and uh, amazing with everybody she works with. So I would love to be graced with her presence on set as well. Yeah. And, and um, since when I'm you say she's this, incredible on set, what, what does that mean? Um, well, you know, she's got a lot of responsibility, not just yes. uh, in terms of uh, what she does as an actor, but she also, she sets the tone, you know, she's yeah. the lead of the show. And from the very beginning, Anytime she's on set, she leads with kindness. She knows she knows everybody in the cast and the crew, um, and she is always she always keeps things light and happy and makes people feel good. It's an like creates an exciting place to work, and and people follow her lead. So when she's yeah. when she's there, she creates a, a fun work environment and a good place to be but she also is the most she has the most to do and she's the most prepared she is so professional oh, wow. at all times and like just ready to go and so everybody else has to raise their game to be to be as ready to go as she is mm -hmm. so uh, just across the board she's a, a terrific leader and we're all very lucky that she is the lead of our show Wow. So true. And that, you know, that I don't know if that arises. My kid did a lot of theater. Um, and I always loved that when the, you know, lead actors, they set the tone for everything and honor yeah. the ensemble in so many ways. And so it's cool to hear that Absolutely. that is the tradition. I, you know, you hear horror stories about people who, um, I don't know. I've heard about uh, actors in lead roles who are not as kind or not as generous with their time. And uh, the show has really evolved over the years and the cast has grown quite a bit. And Aaron yes. is nothing but encouraging of that ensemble, as you say, mm -hmm. and so generous to like give over story to other people and uh, support the growth of these other characters. Yes, I that's feel incredible. Like every I feel like every time we've interviewed someone new that has come to the show, mm -hmm. the first thing people will ask, you know, what was it like stepping on set? Who? And I feel like about 99.9, .9, if not 100% of them were like, Aaron's the first one who reached out and welcomed me and made me feel welcome. And Absolutely. So, I mean, that That's speaks true. volumes. Yeah. yeah, it does. And, I, and of course, we hear about the spirit of the place and the family-like atmosphere. So it sets the tone for everything and then for the magic that we feel uh, yeah. that it really is a community in every sense of the word, so. Yeah, and it absolutely does, it trickles down from Aaron from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. So Ben, it may surprise you to hear that Hardy's take win calls oh, the sorry. heart. May I interrupt? Very yes, you may. Just to finish my wish, wish list, I would love to work with Canfields. Ooh, wonderful yeah. wonderful because well i don't know if that's going to be possible though because viv says he can't even look at you without laughing <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. he and i he and i get to cracking each other up quite a bit that will be the acting challenge for you guys <laughs> is the great. yeah I love it. So um, it may surprise you to know, Ben, that Hardy's take when calls the heart very seriously. Oh, man. And, yeah, I know it's shocking to you. And perhaps we take ourselves just a little bit too seriously. But then along comes Ben Rosenbaum on Twitter. And it's just, there's no end to the humor and the lightness and 
really the glory of funny that you bring um, oh. to our world. And we, we just, funny. <laughs> we, we needed it. We really did need it. And um, I think it was an incredible gift to us, particularly this season, but it's, it's been a gift to us throughout. And mm -hmm. so I just wonder where, where did this gift of wit come from? You know, is it familial where, you know, or is it just you? <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> well, th thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. And I'm glad that, um, I mean, the only reason I, that I see, the only point of being on social media in any way is just to spread some joy and fun. At least that's how I approach it. You do that it. very, very well. Um, so. And so thank you for saying that. Um, in all honesty, I come from a very funny family um, and very, very smart, very smart people um, who have great wit and sense of senses of humor. And so I'm sure that that's whatever, whatever sense of humor I have and, and um, sense of comedy that I have, I'm sure it comes from that. My, my two brothers are, they just crack me up and my mom and my dad were both very witty and, and funny people and uh, my step parents as well. So all, everybody from home is, is yeah, they, they crack me up. We need a Hardy's family reunion in which all of those folks come up and, you know, <laughs> Just, just show them off. In addition to your your onset family of of M sisters, we'd like to see the Rosenbaum wit. Oh no, no, I can't. I can't give you all access to them. They, they, know, they know far too much about me. We'll just have life. a panel just for you guys. <laughs> okay, that would be fun. Um, love that oh my goodness so ben um we are so grateful for you and um i hope that the ms walk is really good for you know what it's saturday you. well a week from saturday right yeah uh april april 24th okay and hopefully everyone will support you i we know that the hardys are going to be ready to support you for that one as well so but thank you so much Thank you. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. I really appreciate that. It's, um, I, I, I'm sure the walk will go very well. And all of the support from the Hardys uh, just gives it that much more uh, sense of purpose and uh, importance to me that I feel like I'm, I'm doing some good with, with the help of the Hardys. It really, it, it goes a much longer way. And I, I can't tell them how much I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's thank great. Thank you so much. And thank you, Hardys, for being with us today. And if you want to find out info about how to donate to Ben's upcoming walk, I think you tweeted the link, right, Ben? Is that the best? Yes, place to I have a, a pinned tweet on Twitter. I also put it up uh, the link in my Instagram bio. Oh, good. So you can okay. find it either location. Um, and, and Ben, and where can we you. find you on Twitter? On Twitter, oh boy, I think I'm <laughs> at B3N. R? Oh, we'll put it no, in the Ben company. Rose. I'm B3N Rose. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it on the accompanying post. There yes. is, no worries. Um, there we'll is a, there's a science fiction writer named Benjamin Rosenbaum. And so for the longest time, I mean, he's been working. I've never actually read his work, though I'm sure he's very talented because he seems to keep putting it out there. And um, he has, I think he's got the Twitter handle Ben Rosenbaum. And so I've always had to kind of figure out a way of, uh, it is Ben Rose. So it's B3NROS3. And that's the best I could do because of the science fiction. It just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, he's always very sweet when people accidentally tag him instead of me. Oh. He's always very sweet to redirect them and let them oh. know. Oh, well, that's, that's really nice. nice. <laughs> oh, love that. Oh, that's so good. So Hardy's, let's show up for Ben like we always do with the great causes and uh, definitely check out that link. And like you said, you know, any amount helps. So be sure. Oh, to yeah. That. Yeah. Any yeah. any amount really, truly helps. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. 
And then Hardys, we'll see you Sunday for another all new episode, 8, 7 central on Hallmark Channel. And then be sure to join us on Twitter, of course, with the hashtag Hardys. And we'll see you Sunday. Thanks, Ben. Bye, Hardys. Thank you, guys.